Hi, my name is Pushkar and I'm the owner and creator of Bot Wagons. And today we are extremely excited to launch the new Archon X1 controller for the Bafang Ultra, also known as the Bafang M620 motor. In addition to putting the controller on our bikes, uh, today we are opening up the controller to everyone who owns that motor with the option of going all the way up to 2300 watts nominal and 3000 watts peak. These controllers are standard on all bikes that we sell that includes the Ultimate Commuter Pro, the Travelanche, and the Cross Tour. So today we are going to focus on three things. First, how does the controller operate? What are the problems we are trying to solve? Second, we will show you a brief demonstration of the user interface, which is the display screen, and how the motor behaves. And third, uh, we will talk about the upgrade process, how that will work, and of course the disclaimers that go along with it. So let's start at the top. How does the controller operate? And, and what are the problems we are trying to solve? The stock Bafang controller has multiple small issues that add up to a somewhat unsatisfactory ride experience, right? So first, the assist doesn't kick in instantaneously, uh, and then there's a little bit of a lag um, after you start pedaling. It is annoying and it takes away from the overall feel of the bike. Second, the assist ramp up is not smooth. So you feel small surges of assist and that are, you know, that fade in and out and that are somewhat sporadic. Third, the assist is not consistent. Uh, the best way to describe this is uh, if you are on, if you're riding on a flat uh, terrain and try to maintain constant speed at the same pedal cadence, as it stands right now, the assist fades in and out. So to maintain the same speed, you have to either brake and the other times you have to sort of pedal a little faster to catch up. The end result is that you can never effectively maintain the speed and that is a reflection on the power delivery. Next, believe it or not, the clock is off. I mean, come on, you know what I mean? It is, it is 2020, you know, the clock should actually work. Next, the display doesn't natively support a 52 volt battery. So for those of you like us who have a 52 volt pack, how should I put this? The display currently is not useful at all. Uh, the only way to get around this on a 50 for a 52 volt pack is to always display the voltage and remember that your motor actually cuts off right around what 44 or 43 volts. And the last thing here is that the programming is a total mess and there's little sense as to what parameters we are controlling and how this affects the motor and the performance. So to sum it all, these issues make the ride experience feel somewhat substandard Riders will obviously essentially get uh, you know, overwhelmed with power the first time you ride it. And believe me, there is nothing like the feel of the Ultra when you, when you first ride it. However, once you get used to the power surge, the motor does its best to remind you that you are still riding an unrefined product. If you ever had a non-Ultra mid-drive system, you want something that has the power of the Ultra, but the smoothness and responsiveness of your traditional leaders like the Bosch's and the Broza and Yamaha. And today we are happy to tell you that we've done exactly that. First, here's what the controller looks like. I'm gonna hold this up real quick. It's also on the B-Shot. We are embedding this controller within the motor. It takes around one to two hours to disassemble the motor, grease it, put the controller in. And once that is done, we will use a program which is right now installed on a computer, uh, but eventually will be available as a display. We connect that with a harness like your traditional programming cable and then calibrate each individual motor. As we are calibrating the motor and flashing the firmware on it, we have the option of setting it at you know, 750 watts nominal, 1000 watts nominal, or 2300 watts nominal. We can also choose what battery system we have to work with, 52 volts or 48 volts. Overall, it takes anywhere between two to three hours per motor to do the whole swap, calibrate, and make sure it is ready to go. So, now that you've briefly understood what the process is, I want to focus on the other side of the problem. With this controller, we are now sampling the motor at nearly 9,000 hertz. This not only brings the performance similar to other European motors, but it handily beats them. I mean, it actually crushes them. In the mid-drive game, there are really no equals if you combine the Bafang Ultra with our new Archon X1. You essentially have left the competition way, way behind. Next, you will notice that the assist is extremely smooth and consistent. You can maintain constant speed at a constant pedal cadence. You will also notice that the power is no longer fading in and out. You can feel 
because of that small little thing, you can feel that a 750 watt motor actually feels like a 1000 watt motor, the constant power. And a 1000 watt similarly feels like a 1500 watt and so on and so forth. The entire bike actually becomes extremely responsive. Now, it is not enough just to drive up the power, but it is important to give you more control over this power. Another benefit of this sampling rate is that now it stops a lot faster than the old controller. So remember as, as you ride and if you stop pedaling in the old controller, the motor still had sort of like a one second or a two second, it would still go. With the new controller, we've, we've addressed that because of higher sampling rate. Overall, as you ride, you will notice that the motor doesn't get in the way anymore. Uh, it leaves you with a pure riding feel, something a lot closer to an actual bicycle. And that is just a fantastic experience. And you will absolutely, absolutely love this upgrade. Okay, great. Now let's switch gears a little bit and show you behind the scenes. We're gonna pause here and we'll show you, uh, I'll, I'll bring my computer up and we will show you how the motor is upgraded, what are the parameters, how will you toggle on and off and so on. So what you're seeing here is that we have this display, uh, Bafang display connected to the motor, which has a new controller in it. First thing I want to highlight is you can obviously go up and down as I click the controller, as I click this toggle switch, you can change the assist levels going all the way to five, going all the way down to one. You can also go to zero. When I long press the plus button, it goes from eco to sport mode, where you also have zero, one, two, three, four, five. So five levels of assist. Another item I want to show you is at the top, you will notice that this is tied to a 52 volt battery system. So the voltage reading here is 56 point, in this case it's 56.6 volts. I'm just going to show you quickly that even if you now toggle it to a percentage, it should work just fine. So the usual, if I'm going to go here, then I go down to the uh, display, which is the SOC view. And when I do this and I'm going to do a percentage, I should expect to see something between 100 and let's say around 70, right? So that's what I'm going to do. Let's go back all the way down and exit out of it. And just like that, you will notice that now we are accurate, accurately reading a 52 volt system. It shows that at 56, it's around 90% charged. And this is really important for us to, so that now you can accurately use this percentage to map out what your range is going to be. The other thing you will notice is the display right now is set up to be miles per hour and the watt, uh, wattage is 1500 watts. This is sort of hard coded. Uh, we, are, we, we won't be able to change it in this version, but we are going to launch our own display to be able to do that. The other important thing I want to highlight is here on the eco and the sport modes in the original controller, these were basically a continuum. So the higher you went, your torque sensing switched more from torque sensing to cadence sensing. So what that effectively means is that at sport level five, you were clown pedaling all the way. With the new controller, we've now swapped these out so that these two are distinct modes that you can configure differently. What I mean by that is the torque and the assist levels for zero, one, two, three, four, five at the eco is independent of the torque level on the sport mode. This gives us an immediate use case which everybody wants to have is rider profiles. So remember that in the old motor you could not have rider profiles, but now that we've decoupled these two different modes, you can very easily configure the sport mode to be your cargo, let's say your cargo profile, and the eco mode to be your regular uh, commuting profile or touring profile. Uh, I have configured my modes to be eco for my regular commuting and the sport for trail mode. And just like that, we've elegantly solved the problem that everybody wanted to solve. Uh, you can now have rider profiles or ride profiles that you can configure immediately and have at least two of them options available at, within, a, within a button click. I'm extremely proud of how simple that solution is. Now, let me show you uh, another interesting thing. I also have the throttle tied to this. I'm going to press the throttle gently and you will notice that this throttle doesn't matter what mode I am on, the throttle is sort of independent. I've adjusted the throttle to be, and I'm going to do that again, I've adjusted the throttle to be not as powerful in order to save your internal gear hub. 
That's a setting that we will allow you to change on your end. So for example, for our bikes, which are more belt drive and have an internal gear hub, we wanted the throttle to not be as super powerful and send the whole 3000 watts of power to the hub. With this, you can set it as a percentage of the assist. So in this case, we've set it at what 30% of the assist or 20% of the assist. So if you had configured your motor for let's say 2500 watts, we are only sending 500 watts as part of the throttle. The other thing you will notice is as I push this throttle, you no longer have to finger tap it. You actually need to gun it, go all the way in and let the controller do the work. So you will notice that the ramp up is extremely smooth now. The assist is extremely smooth. It is not fading in and out. And that's a big, big advantage as you now can use the throttle for many use cases and not have to worry about tempering it or tapping it to control the assist. The last thing here I will notice is, uh, I, will, I will highlight here is, I'm gonna go back to assist level zero and show you that the throttle actually does not work and that's how I have configured it. This is the stock behavior that comes with the motor. And what we can do is, and I'll show you on the configuration screen, you can actually change that. So right now I've configured all the parameters and assist and throttle to be zero at assist level zero, but you can absolutely override that and do a free pedaling. But one of the things that everybody wants to do is to, to have assist level zero, but still have the ability to bike. So at assist level zero, we are still gonna provide a little bit of current to the motor. So there is no back EMF and you can actually ride it like a regular bicycle. That's another big change. It rides really well and gives you the flexibility of using the throttle without having to change the power delivery to the motor. So what you see here is that we are now uh, launching a program which is our own controller program or configuration program. It is authenticated against the motor serial number and the controller serial number. You actually have to register to register with our authentication server before you can uh, change the settings on the, on the controller. So I already have created a profile. When I click on login, it's gonna take a little bit. Then it's gonna come back and, and show me that a programming dongle was found, which means I've actually connected this dongle to the motor. And then it's gonna turn green saying that it's now connected. This dongle is very similar to what you've seen with the traditional Bafang dongles. We are in the process of giving you a better interface as well as potentially a better display so that you don't need a dongle anymore to make these changes. Next, let's, let's talk about the assist levels. Remember here I showed you that the torque sensor does not work in assist level zero, which is how you want it. However, you want the throttle to work. So here what you can do is instead of having the throttle to be zero, you, you can actually set it at an arbitrary number, let's say 100%. So your throttle will actually now work even if you are in eco zero or sport zero mode. The second thing I mentioned earlier was you can now start to create profiles. So eco one, two, three, four, five in my case, this is set up as a continuum right now. That's the default configuration we are going to ship with, but you can now break these up the eco one to five as rider profile one and sport one to five as ride profile two. So in my case, I have eco one to five set up as one to five assist. At level five, you are effectively doubling the assist uh, that is available. So you get 200% assist from the motor. Uh, similarly, sport goes from six to 10. At 10, you are essentially sort of clown pedaling. At that point, it is purely cadence sensing and, and there is no torque sensing involved. So here, if you wanted to have a sport mode correspond to a cargo, what I would do is I would switch the six to let's say a three because I want cargo to be you know high torque up front, then a four and sorry, not 74, but four uh, and so on and so forth, right? So here, and then I'll have that top out at right around eight. So, so in a couple of clicks, what I've been able to do is I've been able to change the torque sensitivity and create a new rider profile to go from commuting, which is eco one to five, to a sport, which is uh, a three to eight. And just with a click of a button, as we saw earlier, you can switch from sport to eco and eco to sport. So in this case, you're switching from a commuting profile to a cargo profile and a cargo profile back to a commuting profile. And that sort of sums up what you can see here on the controller. Great, so now that you've seen how the controller works, how you can configure different ride profiles, and how you can set the different assist levels on the programming side, let's focus on how the upgrade process will work. 
before you start doing anything and ordering in a controller upgrade, please note that changing or replacing the controller will void the warranty that comes with the Pafang motor. Watt Wagons will obviously certify and warranty the controller, but we will not take responsibility for your motor being damaged due to sort of incorrect use or parts breaking. If you want to buy a supported, a warrantied motor, you can buy the entire kit with the controller in it. We provide that and we warranty the motor and the controller for two years if you buy the whole package from us. So when you place the order online, please pick the battery pack that you want to pair the controller with. Uh, on, once the motor is tuned, it will be very hard to swap out from a 14 series to a 13 series and vice versa. Next, choose the nominal wattage based on the batteries you have. If you have the genetic Panasonic cells, uh, they don't support higher wattages. You're, you're better off picking the 1000 watt nominal, 1500 watt peak uh, config. We would recommend you uh, that if you choose the higher wattage, please confirm that you have the Samsung 30Q cells or the LG <coughs> HG2 cells. And of course, a BMS to match. Third, ship your con uh, motor to us. We will actually test your motor, we will connect it to a battery and we'll make sure that the motor is working and operational before we do anything on your motor. We will also, <coughs> we will also check the serial number and the control serial number before we install anything. Please keep that safely with you. We will email that to you. We will need, you will need that, as, as I mentioned earlier, you will need that for registration on a customer portal later on. If your motor is noisy as part of this test or it's missing sensors and all that, we will uh, not upgrade your motor and we will send it back to you minus the cost of shipping. We are not trying to fix broken motors. We are only trying to swap controllers. We do not have parts for broken motors and that is not something we can, we can help you with. Once the entire process is complete, if the motor is good, it works well, we'll open it up, we'll swap the controllers in it, we will then put the motor back together, seal it up, we will now calibrate the motor, we will ship and, and ship it back to you. And that's really the entire process. We are very, very happy that, you can, that we can bring this amazing controller to you so that you can unlock the, the full power and the potential of the amazing Bafang Ultra. Thank you so much for taking the time today to listen to, to, the, to this video. Not only does this make us happy, but we, we are proud that we can bring the unparalleled riding experience to our consumers. Thank you. Have a nice day.